now it's time we look into the open pago token uh yeah but before starting just to recap um the open pago token is just um, a way to encode a value into a token on a server then entering the token on a device using the keypad uh, to check if the token is valid then use uh, that value accordingly so um in this session before diving into the code we'll be uh, talking about the different key components that are needed in order to use the open pago token but also uh, we'll talk about different modes that can be used while generating the token and then we'll see how we can uh, set up those devices like the different parameters that uh, are needed to set uh, those those components So um, in order to generate uh, a token, we need a, a server, which can be any software provider or any uh, custom product that any yeah, every manufacturer will, would, would like. And uh, this is where the token will be generated. And then that token will be entered on a specific device. And those are the main components that we need. We need the server and we need the device. And uh, the device will have any key, a keypad and then uh, will decode the token and then it will use um, that value. And um, while generating the token, um, there are two different modes that can be used. We have um, the set time and add time. Um, add, add time is used when you want to add time to the current value on the device. Let's say you have three days on the device and you add two days which means at the end of the day, you will have five days left. And set time is used when you want to set the time on the device to a specific time. Let's say we have three days, and then you set time to one day. That means at the end of the day, you will only have um, one day left. And uh, in order to set up uh, those components, there are different parameters that are needed. Uh, let's start talking, specific, um, talking about the server. We need um, the starting code uh we also need the key this is the key that is used to encode and decode um, the token so it's uh it's important to remember that while setting up the, the server the key should be encoded uh in hexadecimal format so we'll see it also in the code there is the time divider which is um, a division factor that is used uh, on the value uh this one comes in handy when you want to um to use like a value let's say uh you want to use this token for just a, a, a number a, a number of hours instead of the whole days the whole a, the whole day you just use a number of hours and then we'll use the time divider there is the the circuit digit mode and uh, this one if it's set to one then the token will have a digit between um, one and four otherwise it will have digit between zero and nine which means like this one is useful depending on the keypad used on the device. If the, the, keypad, the keypad has only four uh, digits, then uh, you will use this one. Then um, on the server, we keep also the count. And uh, this one is just a value that keeps on incrementing uh, whenever a new token is generated on the server. When you generate a new token, the count keeps uh, on incrementing. Uh, same thing for the device, but here, let's see, you will need a serial number. Well, this one is not really used during the token generation, but yeah, we know that it's important for every manufacturer to handle uh, serial numbers for their devices. We have the starting code as well. We have the key, uh, which uh, should be uh, in hexadecimal format. Uh, we have the time divider as well, and we have the circuit digit mode, and we have the count and uh, there is also the test code this test code is like after setting up the device let's say you want to test it to test it for a couple of minutes for a couple of seconds that's what, that's where this one will be used and every manufacturer will have their own way to implement uh, this this use case so um as we just talked about the parameters uh now i, I think it's time we see how we can use uh we can use them and how we, how quickly we can generate um, the token using uh, the open pago token so um yeah uh, the open pago token code is on github uh, you can find it there 
and you can clone it you can also download it and then use it in your device and on the device and on the server and uh, it has also some information that might be needed also it contains also documentations that will be that will be useful and uh, in my case i've already downloaded the code as you can see i've already downloaded the code and uh, i've also uh, i assume that I, my device is ready and my server is ready so that i can go straight to see how we can generate the the token as i mentioned earlier it's better to, it's important to remember that uh, the key should be encoded uh, as hexadecimal so that it be sent as byte. So probably in Teams, you might store it. Uh, you might want to share it as a string, but then while setting it on the device or on the server, it's better to uh, encode it. That's why you can see I did it as well. Now um, let's try to run this code and see. As we can see, my uh, device is up and running, and my server is also up. So, um, which means we can proceed, and then we start the first the first process to generate um, to generate the token. So, um, let's let go on the server and uh, create a a method to generate um, to generate the token. Um, we'll be giving it a value that we want to decode to, to encode in the token. And then um, we'll pass also the mode, as I mentioned earlier, which can be either add time or set time. And uh, in order to decode, uh, to encode the token, we'll use the encoder, which, can, uh, which has the functionality to generate the token. And then we use the method called generate standard token. Um, this method, uh, needs the starting code, so we pass the server starting code. It needs uh, the key, which is the server key, and uh, it needs the value, which means like the value that we want to encode into the token. It needs the count, so uh, which is the server count in order to keep to, to increment uh, the count on the server. And uh, it needs the mode. So we pass also the mode that we'll be using and the restricted digit set to make sure that we generate token uh, depending on the device for each device. Yeah. And uh, the generate standard token returns uh, two different values. We have the, uh, the count, it returns the count. So we need to update, we need to update our server count and it returns also the token. And uh, let's also return our token that has been generated. This uh, this function will generate a token. Let's see if we can get it. Uh, so we go on the server, then we generate the token. Let's see if we pass um, five as value. Then the mod. Um, the open pego token code base has uh, some shared values that uh, will be useful when it comes to the mode and from there you can let's try to use the first one uh, token type then we use the add time uh, then let's print our token so um, if you run the code you can see that our, our code, uh, our token is being generated, so which means everything is good. Now um, the remaining step is to decode, to verify it on the device, and then use uh, use that value on the device. So let's go on the device and um, uh, write another method that we'll use to to decode. Let's say to, uh, after the user has entered the value using the keypad, and then you want to decode it on the device. Um, let's say it called token, so um, it will be receiving the, the token itself. Okay. And now, um, in order to decode the token, we, this is, we will need the decoder from the OpenPGO token, then uh, get activation value count and type from token. 
So um, this function, it needs uh, the token. And it needs the starting code. So we pass also the device starting code. Then um, we pass the key, which is the device key. Then we pass the, it's need also the last count, which is the device last count. And uh, it's need the, the six digit set, which is the device six digit mode and uh, the used, uh, used count. Um, normally, while configuring my device, I created a separate a list that will be tracking all the used count and the used uh, token so that in the future, to make sure that if a token has already been used, we don't use it anymore. Uh, the decode, decoding the token uh, will be able to handle it. So this that, that, that will be the use of this used count. So we pass the used count there. Then, uh, okay, okay. I think that's it. So um, the get activation value returns three different values. We have the token value. I mean, the value that has been encoded in the token and uh, it returns the token um, token count and it returns the token type. and it returns the token type. Now, um, after decoding the token, you need to check if it is valid. So if the token is not valid, so if the token is not valid, the token value will be none. So that means like if it's not there, we just say that uh, it's invalid and we can return false. And then every manufacturer will have their own way probably to prevent the user from entering uh, invalid token over and over again. And then you can handle it in this case. Then the next thing is if a token has already been used, uh, then the token value will be equal to minus two. If the token value is equal to minus two, that means like the token has already been used uh, in the past. So we can say it's an old token. And then, um, um, otherwise, it means like everything is good. So we can proceed and use the value as we want on the device. For example, in my use case, uh, I was encoding, let's say five, I, will, I was, I'm encoding days into the token. So um, let's try to use the value that we have on the device. The first thing that we will do is to make sure that we are basing also the count on the device to make sure that the server and the, the device are synchronized so we give it the token count uh, the second one is uh, we will update the uh, the use count to make sure that after using this token we don't use it anymore and to update the use count there is a function in the decoder that will help us to do that so the update use count and what it needs is just the past use count. So we pass the device use count. It needs the value, which means like uh, the, to the, the value that we got from the token and it needs the new count, which is the current count that we, we got from the device, from the token. All right, now um, we have updated the count and the use count. Now let's try to use the token. Uh, in, our, in, our, in my use case, I will be setting um, the expiration date on the device. Uh, I will be setting the expiration date on the device depending on the number of days that have been used. So um, I'm going to, to create just uh, another, create another method for that. And here we'll be passing the token value and um, And, um, and the mode to make sure that I handle the both cases correctly. And um, um, the first thing that we need to do is to get the, the number of days in my, because as I mentioned, 
we are using the, in my in my in my use case i'm using number of days and here we have the token value and remember to make sure that you are getting correct number of days this is where we will use the um, the time divider uh, to make sure that if uh, i want if the time divider is two then we'll divide the value into that was encoded by two uh, then here the next thing is uh, to to use the token depending on both use cases uh, let's start with the if it's set time so we also use the shared values um, we get the token type and set time yeah so if it's set time then that means like i will just uh, update the expiration date on my device to um, to the current the current date then i i add the new number of days uh, otherwise i mean we are adding then uh we'll say we just say expiration date is uh we get the current one and we add we add this and uh, sometimes the um, expiration date might be already in the past, so it's better to make sure that uh, it is updated so that we have we have correct value. That's why we we need to check if it, if it's already in the past, we just uh, set it to the current one. Yeah. Then uh, this updates device status will update the device. Um, We'll update our device and we can use it to make sure that so we give it the token value and we give it the token type okay now uh one thing that uh forgot to mention is while decoding the token you need to change its type to uh, to integers because when you when you generate a token, it's returned it's being returned as a string. So when you want to decode it, you need to change it to numbers. Then you can decode it. Uh, now in our test code, uh, we have our token here. Uh, let's let's use it on the device. And see what what will be the output. So um, let's also let's also uh, get the status of our device and the server as well. Then, um, now, um, this is the initial status. Here we generate the token and here we decode it. We're using it on the device. And let's run the code again. Okay, we are having a exception. Okay, saying that the decode, uh, we didn't pass the type on the update. Okay, yeah, we forgot to pass something. Uh, on the update use count. So we pass the token type that was used. Now uh, we run the code again. Yeah. As you can see, um, initially our expiration date was set to today, uh, the 15th. And uh, after decoding, after decoding the token, it is now set to the 20th, which means like the token was used correctly and uh, the value which was five days was also uh, used uh, was also decode, decoded correct, correctly and the value was used to set to 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 set up to be set on the on the device now we did an implementation to see if a token cannot be used let's see if it's it's working so let's just say device dot um, decode let's try to decode this token twice and see if if that implementation is working as expected. Yeah, as you can see here, at the end, we have a node token, which means uh, you cannot reuse a token uh, twice or more, more than once, I mean, because uh, the token value is being returned 
um, is, is uh, the value is minus two and our code is working perfectly. Yeah, this in short, how quickly you can generate a token and decode it using the open Pigo token without uh, having to handle the code yourself, like uh, writing the, 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 the implementation yourself just by using the code that has been shared. And if you want to learn more about how you can use it and how uh, you can set up different things on the device, um, in the code base, there is a directory called simulators. And there we have a device simulator, which has uh, many other advanced functionalities that you can also set up on your device. Same thing for the server. It also has uh, some many advanced functionalities that you can also use on your um, on your on your server. Just in the code base, you can check you can check them. It also has some examples, and it also has some tests that you can check. And um, while uh, implementing while implementing the OpenPayGo token, if you need help, you can just go to the OpenPayGo website, and then in the documentation sec in the documentation section. You just go to the I would love uh, some free help in there and access will reach out to you uh, for help. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we just talked about uh, the different components that can be used. I mean, the device and the server. We just uh, talked about um, the different mode that we can use while generating the, comp the, the, the token, but also we just saw how quick and easy it is to generate a token and decode it on the device. Thank you, everyone.